Once again, I'm Dan, KD9 MSP, Northwoods of Wisconsin guy. I've been wanting to do this video for a while, share some of the stuff. That's what I'm all about is just, if I come across different ideas, things that I don't believe I've seen anybody else do, I want to share those things with you. Uh, little tricks, hacks, whatever you want to call them, doesn't matter. Today I'm going to talk about antennas and some of the things that, that are going on. We've all got, I imagine, some of our telescoping antennas. This happens to be the 25 foot SS25 from Chameleon. And I like taking care of the stuff that I buy. Uh, it, it's not cheap. It's something that you want to take care of, make last for, make it last for years. And these antennas kind of take me back to the 70s and the 60s when I was growing up, if you remember those. So many were broken back in the day that are similar to this. On top of a, a cheap transistor radio, you put the thing up and it gets kinked. The whole radio shot. Uh, cars, uh, walkie-talkies that we had as a kid. So I, I'm just very uh, particular about how I handle these things. So I wanted to talk about them a little bit. Uh, being chameleon, one of the things that I like to do with them is not really lubricate them up, but keep the dust off of them. And uh, give them a little bit of, uh, I, I guess, lubrication or keeping the moisture out. What well, Chameleon recommends, it's called OxyCard. It's an antioxidant compound. As an electrician, we've used that many times. Throughout. It comes under different names. Nolox is another one. Pentrox is another one. It's kind of a greasy agent, almost kind of like a, a Vaseline in a way. Uh, so one thing you do with those, you just you pretty much open them up. I put just a little bit on a, on a cloth of some kind or a, a paper towel and just sort of wipe them down a little bit. Get the dust off of them. Gives them a little bit of, whoops, a little bit of lubrication in there. Uh, makes them slide in and out better. You don't want to lubricate them completely up. You want them to be staying solid. And also just keeps moisture from getting down into there in case it's going to be raining. And I had it rain one time when I was using one of these. The water dripped into it. And it was days of going like this and trying to get that water out. Finally, it was out and everything was good. So what I do with these, and I'll show you what's coming up with that. Maybe I'll even do one for you here. I put a sheathing around it. It's an expandable sheathing, kind of like what you have on, remember the old Chinese fingers as a kid, you put your fingers in, you couldn't pull your fingers out. That's what we got going on here. It's, it's an Amazon thing. Uh, let's see here. There's my coil of the orange stuff. Excuse my shop, it's a little bit dirty and a little bit messy right now. It's only 14 degrees, so I gotta make this quick. My nose keeps dripping. But it's expandable. Just expand it out and until I could wrap it around this. I'll put two pieces of heat shrink on it and we're good to go with that. Just keeps things from getting bumped around. And I thought I'd show you. It's a little bit different size for the, the 25 foot whip. I'll show you what it takes to do that real quick if you wanna stick around. Just a matter of slipping it on. Kind of getting a length where you want it. I, I came right up above the, well, the, the, the part over here a little bit there, the, the ferrule that's on the bottom for holding it. Made it good and tight. Then made a mark on it where I wanted to cut it, which is, Just kind of feeling here, right about in here somewhere. Take it back off, cut it. Slip it back down on. Yep, that looks real good for lengthwise. Then what I've got, some shrink wrap. You can buy this at Menards, uh, 
all over the place, Menards, Fleet Farms, uh, online on Amazon. This happens to be Gardner Bender, GB once again. And it's just a, a heat shrink, happens to be for the size for this antenna. We'll try putting those on once here. Seems to be lined up good where I'd like to. Get the heat done. Yeah, I don't know how that's gonna work today with all this cold. You know what? Rather than waste your time watching here, this is just not going to fly. Things are just too cold. Obviously, the stainless is cold underneath here, but you can see how it turns out. It turns out real nice, nice and tight. It's just the bottom portion to keep things from knocking around, keeps it from getting dented, if possible, if you hit it. You know, if you kink these things, they're shot. If you dent them, it's going to be hard to go in and out. If the dent is too big, it's not going to work at all. Last thing I wanted to show you is a case that I made up for them. Just has a little piece of poly sheathing inside of it. This is a document case. Once again, Menards, they're expandable. Kind of expandable for whatever size you want to go with. I thought, well, that's going to keep these things safe from, from bopping around and getting beat up in the car and things. Just go like that. All your antennas are in there, ready to rock and roll. Uh, if you like the video, I'd appreciate a like, sign up. There's going to be more. So through the magic of digital editing, I wanted to get back to everybody here and just show you the final result of uh, the antenna that I shrunk wrapped this on inside the house once it was a little lot warmer than 14 degrees. Uh, finally, the antenna warmed up, the, the, the heat gun could actually heat the temperature up to shrink wrap it. So there's the final element right there, all, all done and completed. Fits into the container here for storage, for portability, for safety. Uh, something I too wanted to show you is that the two different kinds that I used, I'll have a link below. This is the same stuff that I used, I might have mentioned this, to put onto the coax. Uh, I have another video of that, I'll put a link for that below here where you can wrap your coax with that. This, uh, this element right around here, it's, it's some kind of a little Chinese finger type of thing. It keeps things from, from people stepping on it, walking on it, and stuff like that. Hang on one second. I got one more thing to show you that I'd like to talk about today before we quit. So one more thing I wanted to discuss with everybody, it's uh, concerning the batteries that a lot of us are using right now for proto activations and out in the field work where you need power for your, your uh, rigs. I have my lifeboat guard case, which I put my batteries inside of. You'll find these on Amazon and a lot of different places. Look for a couple reviews on YouTube form. I just want to mention, it wasn't enough to mention for a whole new video, but what these are, it's a fireproof rated case for these lipos. We've had batteries in construction when I was on that, that one of these batteries started a self-destruct inside the game box one time. I almost burned up just thousands of dollars worth of stuff. And it was kind of a scary experience. The thing was just frothing and melting and sparking and we threw it on the ground and let it let it eat itself up then but i just can't imagine having a battery this size uh 50 amp hour and having problems with that inside your vehicle or something so keep that in mind look it up hey thanks for stopping by uh i always try to share different things that i come across with you might make your your activations a little bit easier a little bit safer and uh, look for descriptions below some of the links that I'll have for my site. If you've got any uh, videos that you'd like to see done for innovative stuff for polar activities, just let me know. Until then, this is Dan, the Northwoods guy, KD9MSP and 73.